The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM on Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And do we have enough news going on in this cycle this morning? We get uh, the resignation of the UK Prime Minister, not on the job that long, uh, the shortest tenure ever. So we get some action in the markets on a global perspective in a big way. S&Ps right now, we trade lower from that 8.30 announcement from 37.30, that's when that was just announced, folks, about 35 minutes ago. At 8.30 a.m., she marched out from 10 Downing, made the speech that she was resigning and marched back in, didn't take long at all. S&Ps down a bit from that level. We get the NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 51 as well. Interesting overnight action. When you look at markets were lower at about 9.30 last night, accelerated right into that number, and then you trade lower in the last half hour. The Dow barely hanging on to green by six points right now. You have the Russell, negative by three at 17.29. We jump to commodities. Crude overnight climbs to a high of $86 and change. We're trading at 85.53 right now. We get the gold contract trading with some volatility as we get some currency action this morning. Let's jump over to the dollar index. Speaking of currency action, dollar trades lower overnight on that announcement. There is 8.30. You actually get a pop, though, on the actual news. You trade it from 113.10 down to 112.30. Then you get actually a pop on the news itself. We jump over to the pound. Pound U.S. dollar gets a little bit of a bounce. We put the pound U.S. dollar on a daily basis back within the channel line. There's your volatility uh, when guilt soared over in the U.K. And just remarkable, man. I mean, how quickly things go over there. Right now, though, not as big of an action as you may think even. With the pound sitting at about 112.62, we jump over to the euro right now. Euro U.S. dollar sitting at 98, bumping up against the upper boundary potentially of that channel line the euro's been in. Let's check out the dollar yen as we hit 150. For the first time since 1990, man, when is that thing going to stop, right? You put this on a weekly. I mean, look at this year, folks. Since March, on a weekly basis, you have six red bars, and you got some pretty big green bars. Did you hear that? Seven months of action, basically. We have been in, and you have six weekly bars that are red. The rest are green. We just hit 150. And, yeah, if you take this thing back, you put it on a monthly. I got this pulled up on the Thinkorswim platform. Let's see what we hit here. We didn't quite get there, I guess, in 1998. The high there, 147.65. We're over that level, and we are back to highs that we saw in April or May of 20, uh, 20, not even close, man, 1990 in 150. And look at the move before that, man, as Japan came about as an electronics powerhouse. You have the yen accelerated from 260 down to 120. You did catch that bid back up to 150 before this thing jammed all the way to 80. And just like that, folks, we're back to 150 in the yen, back to a 15 minute basis. We hit that level at about 4 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Just remarkable what's going on on the yen in, com in comparison to especially the dollar. And we jumped in notes and bonds. We got lows yet again, folks, in price. There's your 10-year. We're down another basically seven ticks. You put this thing on a daily basis. We're breaking below yesterday's low. Higher yield coming at you, even in the face of everything going on with the dollar. You get the 30-year, down 14 ticks, man. I was talking to our man Teddy Keggs that yesterday. You're saying you put these things on weeklies, right? My goodness. Look at the acceleration. Not a single green bar. And we're talking about almost three months of action, folks. Three months. You've had yields going through the roof higher. We had the 10-year just trade from 122.02 to now at a 109 handle on the 10-year. All right, we jump around to some of the equities. We are coming into earnings season. Tesla last night after the bell, and they're going to trade down lower. Uh, well within the expected move, though. We've been talking about about a $17 expected move. These numbers don't reset, folks, until the open because they're based off options pricing, which does not open until 930, the opening bell. So $17 move, you're down about $12. There's the volatility on their numbers last night. You catch a little bit of a bid in the last few minutes to 209.95, taking a look at Tesla. So we're gonna open at about 210 here, right? Pretty critical area for Tesla, man. 
you're coming into an area, you back it up to the lows of May of 206.86, 207.67, and the recent low, of course, 204.16, but Tesla trading a little bit lower on their numbers, and we'll get into what they had to say. Elon, though, pedal to the metal. Of course, he's going to be the ultimate promoter for their numbers, man. Um, a buck oh five a share is what they made. The market was looking for 99 cents. Revenue, 21.5 billion, though. The market was looking for almost 22 billion. Yeah, there's been a sell off this year, to say the least. Um, and only Musk could get away with what he's doing, folks, in terms of the demise of this company's valuation. Well, he has been so occupied with another venture of his own, it would just never take place in a public sphere. sphere in terms of for a public company where you're managing other people's money to run that company. And meanwhile, he is deep in it. I mean, imagine the time it must take, even for somebody like Elon, managing Tesla, SpaceX, and then adding the Twitter fascination to that spectrum and how obviously that could be impacting uh, those Tesla shares. And we're down about 12 bucks right now to 210 for Tesla shares. We jump to the airlines as they've come out and American completes it 13.46 billion in three months, not, not a bad 90 day haul. And that's up 13% from 2019. Always enjoy when you get some 2019 comps, folks, because that is much more realistic comparison uh, versus a real world scenario versus 20 and 21, where things were just out of whack still last year. So they're Up 13% and flying 10% less routes. Talk about inflation, right? And that's not profit, okay? That's straight up revenue. They're flying 10% less and they're taking in 13% more. Do the math, folks. I mean, that means that they're flying 90% of their numbers on revenue and they're taking in 113%, which means it's almost a 23% number, you could say. Now, that's not like simple math to go for. Excuse me one second, apologies. Um, but yes, nonetheless, they deliver, man. Capacity during the quarter will be down 5 to 7% from 2019. Um, and they're looking for 50 to 70 cents. So they beat on earnings. They beat on revenue. And the market likes the fact that they are taking in more money, even if they're flying less flights. We jump over to American. And they're a little bit lower with the market this morning. They trade from 1448 Looks like they said something on that conference call in the last few minutes, though, just as I was jumping on the air, man. 8.45 in the morning. This thing really dove. Not sure what they said. Maybe somebody has in the den, but American. Um, I guess maybe. No, that's just, you know what? That's just that. Well, who knows? Their, their conference call, you know, if you're listening, the conference call started right when uh, the UK prime minister resigned. So not sure if that's a little market volatility as you had the market sell off as well, or if they were saying something on the conference call. We jumped to some of the other airlines this morning. Delta. Pretty strong numbers last week. They've traded higher from 28.50 to now 32.50. See how JetBlue's trading on the heels of their uh, acquisition of Spirit. Yeah, I was talking about this yesterday. Be careful of this one, folks. Right? That is a straight shot down from 22 bucks to six dollars and change, even taking over Spirit. And that's not a done deal. Okay, they're going to face some regulatory scrutiny. I pulled up both maps yesterday on my show. Obviously, a lot of overlapping maps in terms of their presence in the Northeast. Uh, JetBlue, a big hub up, up in Boston. They do a lot of business in Tampa as well. Spirit's got Tampa to Boston routes, among many others. Nonetheless, folks, we're going to be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIVC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have S&P futures just barely negative in the red by about two points right now, trading at 3704. You got the NASDAQ 100 negative by 34. Dow barely in the green by 53 points. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, fast market with your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, folks. They do an outstanding job. They break you down the day's market action, and then they walk you through three hypothetical trade setups, all of them using options, all of them using defined risk in this market. And Kevin Hanks, do we got a slow news cycle or what's going on, brother? Good morning. Tommy O'Brien, yeah, just when you think uh, this wasn't going to be a big week for news, uh, the U.K. shows us that they don't have a real handle on things that are going on, not only with their inflation number uh, a, a bit ago, but now the resignation of their prime minister after only seven weeks. Pretty incredible. And, you know, I think uncertainty is all over these markets right now, Tommy. So uh, this is the time to be real careful. Yeah, pretty, re pretty remarkable. We wake up this morning and I'm watching the resignation at 10 Downing Street. Not what I expected, not what we were talking about yesterday morning. Uh, they have some turmoil, to say the least, man. Uh, dollar index this morning, Kevin, we were just at about 113. We're at 112.62. Of course, the pound reacting a bit, but some of this already in, you know, some of those currencies, Kevin, the move's not as big as maybe you might expect on a sudden news movement like that. Uh, but how about the yen even, Kevin? Are we taking any trips to Japan, man, with the yen hitting 150 for the first time since 1990? Yeah, listen, I, I think the yen is a story of extremely dovish, you know, go government actions that are taking its toll on, on their currency. So eventually... You know, something's going to have to happen here. But, yeah. you know, Japan has come out very clearly and said they're trying to stimulate their economy. So yep. uh, it's not really surprising. They, they've been very clear when the rest of the world is fighting inflation. <coughs> excuse me. Japan has not gone that route. 
it is remarkable, man. The way that these currencies can trend, we're pushing 15 months, 16 months, a few years on some of them um, and show no signs just yet. And eventually, I imagine we'll have to get some rollover, whether it's the dollar, especially the yen. We have the euro below parity, uh, but not happening just yet, man. And, and the UK uh, just kind of showing things are still happening in a big way. With that in mind, Kevin, we got some numbers last night out of Tesla. They're a little bit lower this morning, uh, but well within the expected move there for Tesla. Uh, we march forward. American Airlines, some pretty decent numbers, following it up with the airlines, some decent numbers. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up today at 12, Kevin? Today we've got more earnings coming out. We're, we're, we're going to look at uh, other names that are in the news as well. American, American Express. Like Folio, we'll, we'll do a presentation on American Express. And then we'll trade Oracle that's in the news today and Dick Sporting Goods on a Ooh. big upgrade today. So Dick Sporting Goods, Oracle, and uh, a, a big look at American Express today. Dick Sporting Goods, man. I'm just a fan of, as a consumer of that company. They really got it done during COVID, and the chart shows it from 13 bucks up to 150 And I remember, Kevin, early on in COVID when everything shut down, uh, I was pulling up. Um, uh, it was an order and then a pickup to go. And that was before those things were really happening, man. And Dix marched out a pair of, of shoes for me. And I felt like I was picking up an Outback order. And now that's just so common two years later. Uh, Target, man, I go into Target and it's just everybody is just sitting there picking up their orders to go. Dix at about 109. And I was just in there buying some T-ball stuff for the kids, man, last week. So they got it. We'll be listening. Kevin, I appreciate you taking the time as always. Today's a busy morning, as always recently. But we look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, man. And we'll talk to you next Tuesday as well. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, Tommy. You have a great one as well. Fo folks, tune in. Uh, we're right in the middle of coming into the beginning of earnings, and we got a hot market right now. And as their program says, we got a fast market right now. And that is for sure, man. S&Ps, you wouldn't know the volatility we're getting if you woke up this morning, folks. S&Ps flat to the tick right now at 3707. But you see the volatility even since the resignation of trust. And that was pretty much out there coming into, at least coming in in the prior few minutes, coming into her announcement at 8.30. Excuse me. So it wasn't a complete shocker that she walked out there and, and, and that happened. Uh, I had Bloomberg up and I wasn't listening to the audio. Uh, I did try and tune it in right as she jumped on there. But they had the headline up that she was expected to resign. And so that was kind of known. So interesting that you do get a little bit of a market sell-off right on that. Now, what we also got, Okay, at that number is we also got initial unemployment claims, which are up a bit, I believe. Let me find that one as well. Um, jumping around, where are we? I had it up, maybe I closed it. Closed it, but claims were out. It was two hundred and fourteen thousand potentially somewhere around that number. Maybe somebody has it in the den. Out at eight thirty as well. But in light of what's going on in the UK, man, in light of what's going on in the end, you could see bigger reactions today than we actually have going on, right? I mean. You could have seen a, a huge reversal in the pound. And yeah, on a five minute basis, okay, we do have the move going on probably, and that's when things got figured out. Maybe over there, maybe a few hours ahead of time. So, what, what, what was going on? You were at 111, you're at 112. But I mean, look where the pound is. You're just back to where you were on Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday's action. We put this thing on a daily, the pound. Yeah, you're well off the lows, but you were already well off the lows. This is a huge reversal in there. I mean, that's the shortest tenure ever for a prime minister, seven weeks. And think, what, think what's happened in those seven weeks, man. Talk about blowing it out of the park in a spectacular failure for them. And uh, But, yeah, it could be. I mean, even the yen, right? I woke up and I saw headlines of the yen. And what this really probably says, a lot of this was already factored in. But I saw the headline of 150 on the yen. And I said, ah, what's gold doing, right? What's gold doing? Well, gold's positive, actually. So even as the yen has continued lower, folks, Gold's trading right where you were on September 27th. You take a look at the yen, where it was on September 27th, you were at 144. So you've had the dollar yen go up five points. We have had dollar strength, yen weakness to the degree of five points since then. And you have the gold contract sitting right where it was. Now, you jump over to the dollar index since then, okay, to talk about the divergence that the yen has had, right? Because the pound weighed very much on what was going on. And that is when you got that pound acceleration, all right? Pound US dollar, not a coincidence. That's where you get the huge sell-off, okay? Now, that's going to play into the euro. That's going to play into the pound. That's going to play into the dollar index. It's not going to play into the dollar yen. 
And that's why you're seeing that divergence going on there. And that's why you're seeing gold trading at a similar level. But boy, pay attention to it, folks, uh, because the yen pushing 150, if you do get some type of pullback, and it would have to coincide with some type of dollar index, okay, weakening, pulling back. But like Kevin says, eventually it'll happen, folks. You know, we're coming into a Fed that now meets in 12 days, all right, November 2nd. They're probably going to hike 75 basis points. And then after that, all the market's pricing in right now is like another 75 over two meetings. Now, we're probably going to ratchet that up if the data doesn't agree. But the market gets ahead of everything, right? So if in 12 days, I'm like kind of walking through this as I say it myself, saying, man, maybe this is where the market starts to get ahead of it, at least over the next three months or so. Because in 12 days in the November meeting, they're going to hike 75 basis points. If all goes well, they're only one 75 basis point hike away from being done, which they may split over two meetings and go 50 and 25. Well, if that's the case, maybe the charts are factoring in the yields. Maybe they're factoring in the dollar strength. And if the Fed decides that inflation has been tamed enough to slow or pause, maybe you can begin to get that rollover. And maybe that's where gold can finally find a bid. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back for the open. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps. They open up negative by four points right now. We got the 10-year yield at 4.16%. How about it? Let's just jump right to the yields, man, because they're selling off a bit. We're making practically right near new, new lows with the 10-year at 109.24 right now. We jump down to the 15-minute. You see the sell-off, man, right on that 830 number. From 110.06, folks, to 109.24, we made a low at about 4 in the morning. But right now, we are sitting above 4.16%. Remarkable, man. Let's go up and down the line here. Hold on one second. Let's see the yield curve and see what we're talking about for numbers. Because the 10-year, 4.165 is what we're at. The two years at 4.6. Check that out. We got the six-month pushing 4.5. The three-month is above 4%. Make sure you're getting some return on your capital, folks. If you have cash sitting around, even if it's sitting around in your Bank of America account, Wells Fargo account, wherever it's sitting, make sure you're getting some money for it, man, because there is some decent action in terms of what you can get for cash right now sitting around when you've got a three-month treasury yielding more than 4%. That's 90 days, man. That's 90 days. You could you could take things out even on a 30-day, right? You're getting 3.17%. You could have your money rolling out on a 30-day basis to make sure it keeps coming up if you want to keep cash around for emergencies and you're still getting more than 3.15% yield on that one month. Remarkable, man. Okay, let's jump around to what else we have going on, talking about the Tesla numbers a bit. Tesla drops, as Musk says, demand a little harder to come by. Let's see how Tesla's opening. See if they hold on to it. We got the markets basically flat on the open right now. We jump over to Tesla shares. They opened down 6.6%, almost well within the move now. The move is about $17 in either direction yesterday on their earnings. And you got about a $15 move going on right now as the markets dip slightly into the red. Sales, $21.5 billion, but the market was looking for $22. We, knew, we went over. They missed on the revenue side of things. Uh Demand is a little, this, I was looking for the quote here, they had to get to it. Demand is a little harder than it would be otherwise. And he's talking about whether it's China, Europe, the downturns going on over there, and the interest rate hikes. As not surprising, man. They sell cars. People take loans out to get cars. Uh, he's the ultimate cheerleader. So, of course, he's going to say he's extremely confident in the upcoming quarter. They were talking about it in the den earlier. And uh, some of the takes in there were that he was, in terms of the conference call, that he was a little bit all over the place, to put it lightly, talking about the valuations of Tesla versus even companies like Apple or Saudi Aramco. Not the kind of things you want to be talking about as the CEO of a company like Tesla complaining that you're not compared to companies like that. That kind of caught my ear, to say the least. Gross margin narrowed to 27.9%, falling short of the numbers they're looking for. So they have less revenue. The margins are less than what the market was looking for. So in April, they said they were going to make 1.5 million vehicles this year. The companies made 929,910 through the first three quarters, meaning it needs to crank out 570,000 in the final quarter. It produced 305,000 in the final three months of 2021, and they only have 929,000 through three quarters. What is that averaging? 309,000 and change, 310,000 almost, and they need to make 570. Probably not going to happen, right? Uh, but they are sticking to their long-held plans to increase vehicle deliveries by 50% on average annually over multiple years. Yeah, and they're going to start delivering semi-truck sales. But pay attention to those numbers, man. Don't pay attention to Musk and the words and the generalities he uses. And I think the market's paying attention as it's off about 6%. You jump over to the Analyze tab on Tesla. You're talking about a company now valued at about $652 billion. Let's jump around to some of the other companies. Meta, man. This is an interesting one. So they're a little bit higher this morning. You jump over to the Analyze tab from Meta. You talk about a fall from Grace. $360 billion for that company now. Let's see how some of the FANG stocks are trading. Amazon shares down about a quarter percent. We jump over to Apple, up about one-tenth percent for Apple. Microsoft shares this morning up about one-tenth percent. Google shares up a full percent. Let's talk a little bit about Google in the long term, man. I was talking about this earlier in the week on my program. Google at just about the 50% retracement from its entire move during COVID, you're where you jumped around for a bit in the better part of, uh, in the beginning of 2021 in terms of a price tag of about 100 right now. Now, Netflix had some pretty good numbers earlier this week. Netflix shares up about 
seven tenths percent we jump back to the 15 minute chart there's their earnings on tuesday after the bell you're holding on to that price level right now right where you really right where you accelerated to for netflix shares right out of the gate by talking about google okay google owns youtube which i'm sure most of you are aware of and it is remarkable i was saying we had family over the house this past weekend and somebody was saying we have a roku you pull up the roku and it's got all the apps that are preloaded right and I said, how many of these do you subscribe to or do you use? And in my head, I said, probably too many, man. And we went through it, right? And you got Amazon Prime because you're a Prime member. You have Netflix because it's Netflix and it's the leader. You have Disney, which we have in our house for the kids. We have cable through Spectrum TV, which we probably don't need, but we do have. And then you have ESPN and Hulu as part of the Disney package. And then we have HBO on top of that as well because HBO's just got some great programs, man, even at a premium price. And what I said on top of it all, though, is I said, we watch so much YouTube that's free after all of it. You want to cut the cord, folks? Watch YouTube. Watch TFNN all day on YouTube. There you go, right? I watch TFNN. I watch uh, my dad's program. I'll put that on the TV at night. I'll watch Steve. I'll watch Dave, Larry, et cetera. Our man Basil Chapman sometimes right after my program. I'll turn it on in the television in the living room. But then I'm always watching a bunch of other stuff, and the kids are always watching stuff on there too, man. Uh, now, I will say that there's a lot of crap, especially for kids, that I don't think is beneficial in any way. At least when you're watching a streaming service, you can somewhat control where your children are able to watch things. There's a lot of programs that are geared towards kids on Google, on YouTube, that I don't think are good for them in general. And we'll just leave it at that. Um, but there's a lot of good educational programs on there as well, and it's all free. So I'm in my mind, I'm going, it's completely free. That's the at all of it all, right? Now, Google relies so much on advertising, which is part of the reason that you've seen them get so impacted in some of this pullback as you go from 150 down to 100, right? You lose 33% of the value of the company in Google versus a company like Apple. And I say 30, I mean, you're pretty far off. Man. What are you off? You're off 40 bucks. So you're down 25% basically from the highs of Apple at 182. It's been quite a little pullback for Apple, man, since you were just trading at 176. Because I, in my head, I said, yeah, Apple, Apple's not that far off. Apple's now solid 25% off of where it was trading at. But keep it in mind in the long term, man, because there is some extreme value there. That's never going away. And they're almost the ultimate streaming buy. And that's where the future is. You know, everybody else has got to compete. You got Netflix adding a free tier. Meanwhile, you have YouTube out there serving everybody, young and old folks, and it's free. And why wouldn't you go there, man? Right? Maybe you get something for the kids, but I'm considering it. And then you come and go with the subscription services. Now, I heard something on Bloomberg this week that was interesting. And man, if the networks, um, if the sector ever goes there, saying that they'll eventually have to go to subscription models, just like most content producers have in some period of time. So it's going to become a hit or miss type deal. Now, HBO right now, I'm watching the House of Dragons. They got me because they release one a week. It's going to be some form of that, folks. Otherwise, people are just going to be subscribing to one one month, subscribing one to the next. Why not save all that cash? Stay tuned, folks. S&P is negative by 10. We'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps chopping around slightly in the red right now. We're negative by seven points. Taking a look at the Nasdaq, negative by 13. I was talking about Google. So if you are taking a look at this, man, you're not in it. Uh, not sure I'd be stepping into it right now with the S&P at this level. Depends, man. If you are looking to build a long-term retirement position, folks, and this is where things vary so greatly in terms of what your trading strategy is, which is why if you ever give super tailored information folks to the type of degree that you're selling information to some degree that's very tailored to one personal individual and their life situations it varies so greatly that that's the type of information that you're really supposed to be registered in if you're just looking at stocks equities trades etc without really analyzing the exact um just investing uh, and what's the best word for it? Uh, the best philosophy, the best risk tolerance for any person, okay, without looking at that and just looking at a trade. But if you're out there and you're looking to build a longer term position, you can start scaling in. That's what I would do, man. You are still 33% off the highs of 152, okay? You're back to where you were last year. You're at the S&Ps at 3,700. Uh, who says whether inflation is under control or not, okay? So you could step in, but if I'm looking to build a position, man, What's crazy is you look at some of these equities, you're not far off from lows, even coming into pre-pandemic levels, okay? Now, yeah, you'd have to get cut in half to reach a COVID low. Not sure that's happening, all right? But if you get down 20, 30% from where we're at right now, yeah, you're talking about basically where you were coming into the pandemic, which would be a 25% pullback for Google shares to 75. You know, you get down there and you're looking for a position, yeah, I would start adding to Google if you ever pull back to that 75 level. Even jumping around like a company like Amazon, right? Look where you are, you're already back to that level, pre-pandemic of 106. That's exactly where you chopped around. You could at least step in with some type of position with Amazon from 188 to 115. Amazon's gonna be fine in the long term, folks. They got lot so that they're growing with. Now you do have to consider the run that this has had, all right? It's not a no-brainer on these equities, man. The run-ups it's had, even coming into the pandemic, right? You came into the pandemic, where are we? There's our price level into the pandemic. You did chop around for two years between 80 and 100, split adjusted. But boy, it was quite a run up there. You started 2015 off at 15 bucks. And over the period of almost four years, you went up to 100. But guess what? That's almost where we're at right now. So think of that. You're getting into prices that were basically the same thing as 2018. Now, again, Amazon, you know, you're already at quite the Fibonacci pullback for Amazon. You take a look at the run this has had from COVID lows. You hit the 786. I mean, you could make an argument that you get down to the COVID lows. 
but on a longer term basis, again, we're kind of going longer term for a second here. Amazon spent way too much money building out infrastructure. Eventually, things are going to catch up for that, folks. And the way that they grow in cloud and the way that they're able to combine everything, I mean, we've been talking about, I had a conversation with my, our man Kevin Hinks earlier in the week talking about Amazon, that they're now offering Thursday Night Football. Imagine you're a company like Procter & Gamble, man. Imagine you are. I would be all over that type of programming. I would want Amazon to be delivering every single live sporting event Okay, or every single piece of product. I mean, it would be great if just everybody watched everything on Amazon because Amazon could serve up the ads that are more targeted than Facebook could dream of, folks, because they've got your order history. And there's nothing like your order history for advertisers when you're ordering those same products. Now, it's not going to be the same for everybody, okay? But for companies like that that do big business for retail across the board, it could be a game changer in terms of just the ability. I was thinking to myself, I have a Roku smart TV, right? There's nothing stopping. I'm logged into Amazon Prime through Prime TV on my Roku. Somehow you can tie those two together. Somehow in the Amazon Prime app, I'm gonna be able to hit a button on my, and maybe it's not Roku, but maybe it's an Amazon smart TV, which I do have in the house and it's sitting right here actually, in my office ready to be set up, which I have to set it up. But I bet on the Amazon TVs, you're gonna be able to hit a button on your remote and order whatever ad is being played during that live sporting program. So quite a pullback that you're getting from the 188 price tag. Doesn't mean it's not going to go lower. Amazon's been one of the stocks that have been most impacted. When you get those rate sell-offs, man, you see Amazon trade from 114 to 106. Okay, 6% 6 and change like that. But on a long-term basis, man, even today, look at the move. You're getting up 1.1%. Uh, with the NASDAQ 100, up about four tenths right now. The Dow up 144. We check around to some of the other companies. American out with their numbers. They're down about 2%. Seems like they had something to say on the conference call that did not benefit their shares as you traded a little bit lower on the 830 number. Let's jump over to crude. So we continue to rise, 86.46. We got gold contract up by $4. Let's check back to the yen and see how we're trading. U.S. dollar yen right now trading at 149.85. And folks, if you heard me yesterday, we had a great conversation with our man Teddy Kegstat. We talked to him every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can always find those interviews or any program we do on our YouTube page, folks. Just search TFNN within YouTube. You can find our channel and all the videos we do are archived right there. But Teddy's got a great webinar. It's a great time to check out a foreign currency webinar, folks. Teddy's going to do that next Wednesday. October 26th, right after my dad's program from 4 till 5 p.m. This will be hosted in Discord. So if you're already in Discord, uh, this is going to take place right there. Okay, it's just going to be in a different room. You need to be a subscriber to the Tiger Forex Report to attend it. But it's just that simple. You'll be able to click over from the Tiger's Den at 4 o'clock if you're in there to the Tiger Forex Report webinar live with Teddy. It will be archived. You get a month of his newsletter, folks. And it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And right now, just understanding how currencies are trading, folks, can give you a leg up in these markets, whether you're talking about equities, whether you're talking about yields, okay? They're all pretty related right now, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm looking forward to this webinar. Please sign up, check it out. You get a month of the newsletter, and if it's not something you want to keep, then thank you for signing up. You cancel, you get your money back guarantee, and you risk nothing, and I guarantee you, you'll get some value out of the webinar with Teddy in a month of his newsletter. That's for sure. With the yen pushing 150, he has had some great calls, folks. He was out of oil. He's been on the dollar bull. Um, it's a great newsletter, so check it out. S&Ps holding pretty steady. Steady. We're chopping around right now at about 3707. We jump over to the volatility index this morning. We're getting lower levels as we continue to drift. We got a price tag of 3060 only just off the lows of Tuesday. You take a look at the VIX. Even on a 20 day, right? Rolling over yet again. We got up to about 34, okay? When did we get up to 34 folks on the VIX? That was the Wednesday before the CPI. I mean, pay attention to that when these numbers roll around. You are going to see in the next couple months, folks, an elevated volatility spectrum. And we come into some of these data points for the month, and they're going to come quicker than you expect, man. We're coming into a Fed meeting in November. Right after you get the Fed meeting in November, it's going to come into non-farm payrolls for our for the previous month's numbers, which is this month, October. Then we're going to come into CPI for October. You're going to see elevated VIXs, uh, VIX prices coming into some of those data points for fundamental news and economic indicators because so much is riding on them right now. And right now, we're gonna probably get 75 basis points. Look at this 10 year, man. On an hourly basis, just off the lows. And as I said, what are we trading at right now? Let's see, we got a yield that is pushing 4.17. 
percent now. Let's put it back to a five minute chart. Yeah, 4.17, just off the lows. Imagine that 4.2, we're almost talking about. Yeah, and that is the highest yield since 2008. Eventually, we're not going to be saying it's the highest ever, folks. That's not how it goes forever. All right, I'm saying it a lot. I'm saying it a lot today, right? Now, I just told you the currencies and yields are related. Not a coincidence that the yen is at the weakest level since 1990. And you have the 10-year yield yielding the highest levels since 2008. They're all related, folks. It's all happening right in front of us. Pretty remarkable. We got markets back in the green. S&P's up by four. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. Come right back. We'll be back in three minutes. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. You're looking at an S&P positive by about seven points, trading at 37.13. NASDAQ positive by 56. They were talking about in the den. Shopify, man, they have buyers. Check out that acceleration on the open. Shopify, this thing's been hammered, but just check out where, where we are from the lows of last week. Some of the percentages, folks, on these moves, staggering. On an index basis, S&P from low of last Thursday's low, prior to the open on the CPI data print where the markets accelerated lower to the recent high we got, the S&P almost 8% over a period of four days to the upside. You look at a company like Shopify, what's that gonna be, $6.50 to the upside? 
25%, something like that. No, not 25%, excuse me. Uh, yeah, 25%, right? Yeah, pretty close, man. 25% up from the lows of where it was last Thursday. They get a lift of 4.6% right now. Uh, and I'm not even sure what's going on with them. CRM, Salesforce, they get a price revision. I was checking out Piper Sandler. It looks like they adjust their price target. They're up two and a quarter percent. Seems they had a couple news events, but pretty hammered from its high at 311 down to 157. Cut in half. Talk about some moves, man. We jump back to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon catches a little bit of a lift up more than 1% so far this morning. We jump to the banks. JP Morgan up 1% so far this morning. Bank of America catching a little bit of a lift. Higher yields. Net interest, net interest income, folks. The 10-year, a little bit of a pop, but pretty remarkable as we're at about 4.17%. We check out that VIX on a daily basis. Maybe that's a nice little double top you get there. Above 34, we hit 34.88 back on September 28th. You hit a price tag of 34.53. I'll have to put it up there in text on the chart, 34.53. From there, we've sold off a bit. And you see how these highs in the VIX has formed prior, right? You We've tended this calendar year, okay, even just zooming in since January when we've had these sell-offs, you get a little bit of a consolidation for a period of time when we've reached about 35, and that's what we've done on the VIX. So that would make a case for a little bit of a run to the upside. We'll see. S&P's up by 10. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. Live programming all day. Basil Chapman coming up next with the opening call. We've got our man Steve Rhodes at 11, Fast Market at 12, Larry at 1, Dave White at 2, and my dad, live from three till four. Don't forget about Teddy's webinar next week, folks. Check out that Tiger Forex report on the front page of TFNN. Have a great day, everybody.